Hello, my name is Malte Drobe. I'm working for the German Federal Institute for Geosciences and Natural Resources. And today I'm going to present you something about the rapid economic estimation of mining projects. The content has been compiled by Mr. Jürgen Fasters, Mr. Klaus Steinmüller and myself, Mr. Malte Drobe. The rough economic evaluation is not equal to a pre-feasibility study or any similar detailed evaluation. And the main goal we want to show you today is to give the opportunity to compare mining projects in similar locations with known tonnage and grade but lacking detailed information. We are using model costs for mining and processing and we are using the net smelter return as a revenue and calculate the net present value using discounted cash flow. We will present something about development stages of mining projects, reserves and resources, modifying factors and some more details to give at the end a rough economic estimation of mining projects. In the first chapter I will give an overview about how to proceed from an exploration project to a mine. The development of a mineral resources project from exploration up to a new mine is a very lengthy process, taking on average 10 years but can also take far longer. Due to its risks and its high costs, the development process is done stepwise. After every step, the project is evaluated and the owner decides which of the usually various projects will go ahead with further spending for exploration work or a detailed study like feasibility or pre-feasibility study. The pyramid shows different stages in the development of a mining project. So from the bottom, from target generation to the top feasibility and the very top to the tip of this uh, pyramid where a mine would be uh, located. These different stages are also related uh, to different risks. So uh, at the bottom, during the target generation, there's a high, a very high probability that uh, your mining project, in this case, uh, will not proceed to the next step, to the drill target identification. So you need 800 projects in the stage of target generation and only one will become a mine at the end. So the higher you come, the lower is the risk for your mining project, but on the other hand side, the costs will increase. So you have relatively low costs during target generation, but then when it comes to drilling, when it comes to a feasibility study or at the end to the construction of the mine, uh, your costs are of course extremely increasing. The work that is done during these different stages is of course also uh, quite different. So during target generation there's this, uh, literature studies, satellite imagery is probably used and GIS based analysis are done. Then an exploration uh, license can be uh, uh, applied on and if granted then geological working like trenching, mapping, geochemical and geophysical surveys are done. The resource is then identified by drilling, pitting and trenching, so a new mineralization with at least some but unknown tonnage uh, may be discovered. Afterwards, during the resource estimation, estimation, the ore body is outlined by intensive drilling. But this information only shows you that you have a mineralization with a known tonnage and grade in the ground. An ore body has to be mineable. And to define this, uh, the technical, economic, environmental and social parameters also have to be evaluated and this is done during a feasibility study. But only if the feasibility study uh, points to a mineable ore body and financing can be assured, then the ore deposit can be mined and this is just one ore body coming from originally around 800 projects in the stage of target generation. There are different funding options for mineral projects depending on the stage. During the early exploration stage up to the discovery of the mineral deposit, 
seed capital is needed and this is usually coming from private placement. This is very high risk money because a lot of projects do not lead to a mine. When it's about drilling, resource estimation and a pre-feasibility study, usually an initial public offering is done with money from stock exchanges. When it comes to feasibility study, it's also about rights issuing and joint venture forming with bigger companies. Money most probably comes from stock ex exchanges, but also own capital from mining companies. During the construction phase up to the production, it's about bonds and project financing with money from investment banks and major mining companies. On this chart, you can see the relation of risk and investment. During the early stages, grassroots exploration, the risk is very high, but the investment is usually relatively s small. The higher the project comes in the development stage to pre-feasibility and feasibility study, the spending increases, but also the risk decreases. This is another example of investment and uh, risk. Uh, on the bottom you can see uh, different stages, grassroots, exploration, pre-feasibility, feasibility and mine construction at, at the end. And you can see the related investment uh, in red during grassroots exploration. The investment is usually relatively low, but on the other hand side you have a very high risk. This risk is decreasing fundamentally decreasing after the feasibility study, but at the same time the investment is increasing. So you can again see uh, the correlation between high risk, low investment and the higher the probability is to build a mine, the higher the investment is, the lower is on the other hand side the risk. After the discovery of a mineral resource project, it has to be assessed how much material is in the ground and at what tonnage and is this material economically viable to be mined, processed and marketed. And this assessment involves the following studies. Mineral resource estimation, preliminary economic assessment or scoping study, a pre-feasibility study and a feasibility study, whereas the feasibility study has far higher level of detailed information compared to a pre-feasibility study or the before mentioned preliminary economic assessment or a mineral resource estimation. In these studies it's not only about grade and tonnage, it's also about factors influencing the viability of the mineral resource projects. And these factors are geological factors and geographical factors that together form the operational factors. The geological factors are, among others, the ore quality, which includes the grade, the grain size, the texture, the hardness of the ore, byproducts or harmful substances. It's also about the tonnage, the depth, the size and the shape of the ore body, because this defines the mining method and the waste to ore ratio and the conditions of the country rock, which are also important for the outline of the ore body or the applied underground mining method. And also very important, the situation of the groundwater. There are also various geographical factors that are influencing the economies of the project. Most important, where is the project located? How far is it to the next port? Is there road access? What about the mineral rights, the infrastructure in general, the legal system, the mining and environmental and social uh, licenses that are needed, the tax regime, how high are the royalties or the income tax, for example, and also about the business in my environment. What is the market? What is the credit regime in this particular area of the earth? How are human resources? Are there workforce? Is there workforce available? The service infrastructure and the civil society are very important factors influencing the economies of the project. The factors I mentioned 
are just examples, but they have to be considered already during the exploration phase, but in more and more detail when the project is further developed up to the feasibility study. The operational factors include the mining method. Can I apply open pit mining or do I have to apply underground mining? And if it's about underground mining, what kind of underground mining method will I be able to use? And in open pit, what is the waste to all ratio? The processing method is very important. Will I produce a concentrate or do I, can I leach the ore? The mine infrastructure, also very important. How about the power supply and the water management? Do I have enough water or possibly too much water? And the waste management is of more and more importance today. What will I do with the waste rock and how can I deposit the tailings safely? The marketing of the ore product comes at the end. Will I be able to produce a bouillon or a concentrate or am I selling direct shipping ore? During a mineral resource estimation, it's mostly about the tonnage and the grade. What is in the ground? And the available material in the ground is carefully established as an inferred, indicated or measured resource. Typical costs for a mineral resource estimation are around fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars, not including the drilling costs, of course. A little more detailed is the preliminary economic assessment or the scoping study because it already includes first economic analysis. It's about the broad assumption for the economic, technical and operational parameters. It's about mineral resources and how big will the processing facility probably be. But the accuracy is plus minus 40 to 50 percent, so relatively rough. Typical costs are in the range of 100,000 to 250,000 dollars. A pre-feasibility is already far more detailed. The mining and mineral processing method is clearly defined. A financial analysis is conducted based on reasonable assumptions of mining costs, metallurgy, engineering, economic and other relevant factors. Environmental and social baseline studies are established and the mineral resource has to be classified as a mineral reserve. The cost accuracy is plus minus 25% and typical costs for such a pre-feasibility study are 0.5 to 2 million dollars. The final study is the feasibility study. Here, detailed evaluation of the geological, engineering, operating, economic, legal, fiscal, environmental, social and more relevant factors are included. An environmental and a social impact assessment has been conducted the basis for a final decision by financial institution to finance the development of the deposit for mineral production is this feasibility study. The cost accuracy is already plus minus 15%. It cannot be more exact because there is always a certain uncertainty of the geology and the recovery. Typical costs of such a feasibility study are 1 million to plus 100 million US dollars.
On this chart, one can again see how the risk is decreasing from exploration concept to grassroots exploration up to the feasibility study. After the feasibility study, there's one more very important step, and that is the go-to decision to do the construction, and this involves financing. This is again a little critical, but before, from grassroots up to feasibility, the relative risk of the project is decreasing, meaning that it's more and more probable that a mine is developed. The relative costs are very low at the beginning, increasing especially during resource definition when it is about drilling, and then again, of course, when it's up to the construction, which is for a mineral project can be up to $10 billion. Here's again a chart with relative costs from concept, exploration, detailed exploration, resource estimation, the feasibility study, and then the development and construction of the mine, which is the most cost-intensive phase. During mining operation, the costs are getting down again, and the final costs come when it's about mine closure and mine reclamation. The view of a geologist is, of course, that the exploration phase is the most exciting phase during the mine cycle, but uh, economic institutions have a slightly different uh, view on this, and they see an increase in the level of activity up to the construction, and then the highest uh, level of activity is when the mine is uh, at the peak production, probably when, the, when an expansion has been finished and then the activity is rapidly going down after the mine has been closed. But the ongoing rehabilitation can be very time-consuming com time because it has to be made sure that the mine is safely closed and no risk is here to the population in the vicinity, especially to the population in the vicinity for the next decades or hundreds of years.